Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday morning to you, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. Hey, I can see. My goodness gracious. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I appreciate you being with me. We are... We are continuing our study of Daniel 9, 24 to 27. I have suggested to you that there is a 37 to 40 year interim period of time. It's not a gap in the sense of postponement. But rather, I have suggested to you that the, that the key to understanding Daniel 70 weeks is to be found in its festal references. That is, the references to the feast days. 70 weeks were determined to put away sin. That's part of the festal sacrificial system. Seventy weeks are determined to make the atonement. <coughs> Certainly, making of the atonement is part and parcel of the seven festal calendar countdown. The, the making of atonement, the day of atonement, Yom Kippur, was set right in the middle of the last three of Israel's feast days. And then, of course, you have the judgment of Sukkot. And what I've shown to you, oh, by the way, you have the death of Messiah, which is Passover. So we have at least four festal references right there in Daniel 9, 24 to 27. How that can be ignored literally is beyond me. Some people try to create a dichotomy and say, oh, well, okay, the atonement there is not the same as Jesus's. Well, who made the atonement then? What is the difference? But let's look at this fact. Now, here is, in essence, my argument. There are those, many, who believe that the 70 weeks ended in 34-35 A.D. Well, in order to end the 70 weeks in 34-35 A.D., you must be able to prove that the atonement was completed, consummated, finished at the cross. And I know that a lot of people, a lot of wonderful people, take and believe that position, but it is not the biblical position. By the way, I once held that view. But in following the type and the antitype, in following the explicit statements of the New Testament, it is simply not possible to say that the atonement was finished at the cross. And someone may say, wait a minute, Don. Romans chapter 5 and verse 10 says, it is by him, by Christ, that we have, past tense, received the atonement. Well, certainly you could say that because the atonement process, i.e. the death of Jesus, entrance into the most holy place had taken place, but he had not yet come out of the most holy place to consummate the atonement. He had done the initial sacrificial element, uh, action, praxis, if you please, but he had not finished it. There is in the New Testament what is known, what scholars have recognized for forever, the already, but the not yet. Things such as salvation, grace, uh, redemption, etc., are all spoken of as present realities, and then the same writers will turn around and talk about those very identical things as future realities. And we must keep in mind that during that interim period of time, the miraculous gifts of the Holy Spirit were given to guarantee what had begun. As Paul said in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, I am confident the one who has begun a good work in you. What was that work? It was the work of salvation. It was the work of redemption. We'll complete it at the day of the Lord. Process begun, process to be completed. Now, <coughs> just for information's sake here, <coughs> pardon me, I have consulted with Jewish rabbis and with Hebrew specialists. I have asked them, on the Day of Atonement, under Torah, when was the Day of Atonement, when was the Atonement itself considered to be completed? Without exception, every rabbi that I have consulted, you can get on the internet yourself and, and go to askarabbi.com, ask, ask that question. 
every single Jewish scholar, every single biblical scholar for that matter, that has examined the Day of Atonement practice have said the Day of Atonement was considered an organic whole, an organic unity. It is unimaginable, as one Jewish rabbi told me, to believe or to suggest that the atonement was finished at the killing of the sacrifice. And it wasn't completed even when the high priest went into the most holy place there to offer that blood. It was not completed and could never be considered to be completed until the high priest came out. Now watch how that agrees perfectly with Hebrews chapter 9. <clears throat> Once at the end of the age, Christ has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Hebrews 9, 26. Hebrews 9, 24. Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, but into the most holy place there to offer himself. Well, there's the first two actions of the day of, uh, of Yom Kippur, of the Day of Atonement. Oh, but wait. To those who eagerly look for him, he will appear again the second time for salvation. Now watch this, Hebrews 10, verse 1. There is no chapter division uh, in the text, and that chapter division is unfortunate. So watch. To those who eagerly look for him, he shall appear again the second time, apart from sin, for salvation, for the law, having a shadow of good things about to come, could never by those sacrifices take away sin. Do you see what the writer says? Christ was going to, <coughs> Christ had to <coughs> come the second time, to fulfill the types and the shadows of the law, the types and the shadows which were still when he wrote. <clears throat> and by the way, what types and shadows is he talking about? The Day of Atonement. Those are the types and the shadows that he is talking about in the context. Those shadows, those practices were still when he wrote Shadows of good things about to come. That's the literal translation. And so here we have, in the New Testament, unequivocal affirmation that the Day of Atonement had not been consummated. Now, <clears throat> here's the argument. If it's true that 70 weeks were determined to make the atonement, of Daniel 9, 24, if that day of atonement is the soteriological day of atonement of which Christ offered his, himself as a sacrifice to make the atonement, then since 70 weeks were determined to make that atonement, and since the finishing of that atonement, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> was still future, when Hebrews was written, that demands, it proves unequivocally and undeniably that the 70 weeks had not yet been completed. It means that the interim between Pentecost and the last three feasts was, already, was right there going on at that time waiting to be consummated when? At the coming of Christ out of the most holy place. When was that to occur? Well, Hebrews 10, 37, and now in a very, very little while. That's the proper rendering from the Greek. The one who is coming. Well, who was coming? It was Christ. Why was he coming? To consummate the atonement, to bring the salvation purchased through his death. And now in a very, very little while, the one who is coming will come and will not tarry. Folks, we have right here in Hebrews 9 proof positive. The atonement was not completed. It was not over at the cross. It was not completed when Jesus ascended into the most holy place. It would be completed when Christ came again, appeared the second time for salvation. And that, once again, is unequivocal and undeniable proof 
that the 70 weeks of Daniel 9 were not fulfilled in A.D. 34 or 35. And we'll have more on that. In the meantime, get a copy of my book. 70 weeks are determined for the resurrection. We're going to be talking about that. And we'll do it on the flip side. See you there.